A young girl assumes the role of a big sister to her younger brother and makes the selfless decision to part with her most cherished belongings, her dolls, in order to obtain his necessary medication. Before long, assistance arrives unexpectedly. Mia and Max were angels, or so their neighbors called them. The brother and sister were raised alone by their mother, Jennifer, after their dad left for his heavenly abode. Since Jennifer was a working woman who couldn't afford a nanny, her neighbors looked after Mia and Max in her absence and gladly pitched in to care for the kids. How couldn't they? Mia and Max were absolute sweethearts. They would assist the neighbors in the garden, walk their dogs, and carry groceries from their cars to their homes. No matter how much the neighbors refused, the siblings would always assist them. Mommy says we should always help others in need. Mia would chirp, and Max would agree with her with a broad smile. Because a little help goes a long way, he would add. The two darling children filled the entire neighborhood with their infectious smiles and silly giggles. That was until Max collapsed in the playground one day and was rushed to the hospital. Sadly, it turned out he was sick, very sick, and needed medicines to keep him going. Jennifer looked at the doctor's prescription inside. That's going to cost a lot of money. I doubt I'll be able to afford that. But as a mother, she had to try. So she began setting aside money each month for Max and medications, which was never enough. With the house mortgage, school expenses, and hospital bills, she couldn't save enough. At that point, Jennifer began cutting on gas money and even food. She would walk miles every day or resort to the local bus when exhausted. But she didn't tell her children or anyone else that she was in trouble. She kept suffering alone. One night, Jennifer came home, opened the fridge, and started crying. They only had one can of tomato soup left, which wouldn't be enough for their family of three. Jennifer decided to make it for her kids, but it was only enough for one portion, which meant either Mia or Max would sleep hungry. That broke Jennifer on the inside. I'm a horrible mother, she cried, blaming herself. I can't even feed my children. Finally, she added extra water to the soup so it would make two portions and served it to her children with crackers. Mommy, Mia said after she had the first spoonful, did the soup go bad? It's just so watery. Oh, is it? Jennifer swallowed her tears as she pretended to taste it. I. I think I accidentally added more water. Please adjust for today, kids. Mommy will make something better next time. Relax, Mommy. Mia smiled. It's okay. You work very hard for us. It's okay if your soup isn't perfect, right, Max? The little boy nodded. I like it with crackers, Mommy, he said, and the two children finished their dinner with the same happiness as any other day. As soon as they left the table after eating, Jennifer burst into tears. She couldn't believe it had all come to this. She'd have to go grocery shopping and use the money she'd set aside for Max and medications. I'm sorry, children, she sobbed. I'll cook you a nice dinner. I'm sorry I have to cut on your food. The next day, Jennifer left the bar where she worked as a waitress early, stopped by a grocery store, and shopped for a bag full of groceries. When she arrived home, she was shocked. Mia was sitting in the front yard selling her dolls with a placard beside her that read, Help us with Max's meds, Mia. Jennifer cried. What's all this, honey? Mommy? Mia hadn't expected Jennifer to return so soon, nor did she expect to be caught selling her dolls. Why are you sitting here with your dolls, honey? Jennifer repeated herself. To help Max, said Mia quietly. I know you can't help Max alone, Mommy. I saw you crying so many times. I had to do something, honey. But these dolls are your favorite. Are you giving them up? I don't like these dolls as much as Max, Mommy, Maya said sadly. I wanted to help you because you cry and you are sad. I don't want you to be sad, and I don't want Max to be sick. Let's help him together, Mommy. Jennifer burst into tears and hugged Mia. Oh, darling, my little girl is not little anymore. Thank you for your help, sweetheart. But Mommy will manage. Okay, sweetie. You don't need to sell your toys for that. At that point, neither Jennifer nor Mia knew they would soon receive help from an unexpected place. When Jennifer checked her mailbox the next day, she found an envelope with a sticky note on it. Thanks for your kids, it said at the top. Jennifer tore open the flat and felt hot tears rolling down her cheeks. Inside the envelope was $2,000 and another note. Your children have been a gift to us. They help everyone else, so we had to help them as well. You raised your children well and should be proud of them. 
Please keep this money from us and use it to get the medication your son requires. We shouldn't be prying into your affairs unnecessarily, but if you accept our help, we'll be grateful. Tears streaming down her cheeks, Jennifer embraced her children tightly as they hurried inside. God has sent us help, my darlings, she whispered through sobs. Thank you for being the greatest children to me. Mommy's love for you reaches beyond the stars. Though the contribution of $2,000 may not have been grand, the kindness of their neighbors, Mita's selflessness in parting with her dolls, and Max's compassionate nature as he aided those around him, earned Jennifer and her children the love, warmth, and good health of their community.